Welcome to Spark Finance. This is Andrew here. And I know last week at the end of January, we did a video on GameStop, giving an overview of what was occurring with GameStop's short squeeze. And uh, it was a bit of a battle between Reddit followers on Wall Street bets and Wall Street and big hedge funds and GameStop share price basically caught in the middle of all this. So to give a follow-up on that now, this is the first week of February, and we saw the reaction from the markets now in the second week of this crazy occurrence here in this short squeeze. So when the markets opened, GameStop started selling off. And, and originally, you know, I think the high that it got to here was around $400 a share. So that was, that was pretty incredible to go from a $4 stock to up to $400. But then this thing started selling off. And at the same time, a bunch of these companies, they did all this restricted trading and it kind of like killed the stock. It was in the 300s at the end of the last week, I believe. And then this week, it started off, you know, down $100 in a single day. And the sell-off continued here. We ended the week around $66 a share. So that was about a 80% loss from the beginning of the week to the end of the week on GameStop shares. AMC, which is also having a similar occurrence with the same kind of short squeeze battle, had, a, a, I think it was down about... 50% on the week. So you saw not just GameStop, but a lot of these short seller names, they were actually going down here. And there was some good news with it and some bad news, right? In the end here, the short squeeze did work. Exactly what was predicted to happen happened. It just happened very quickly. I mean, all of this occurred in like a two week period. There was the short squeeze. There was the gamma short, which uh, the gamma squeeze or infinity squeeze, which is relating to the options around GameStop shares. And then the short squeeze was more around the uh, actual regular shares common stock of the company. That occurred, right? And, and these big hedge funds or investment groups like Melvin Capital and Citron Capital, Melvin Capital covered their short on GameStop and they took a giant loss on that. They were saying that they took 53% loss of the value of their assets under management. They had like 12.5 billion, and then now they were down to like five or six billion dollars left. And then Citron Capital said they took a 90% loss on their short positions on GameStop. So here, the Redditors, the Wall Street bets crowd, they won. And the problem was is that I saw a lot of this information coming out, telling everybody to hold the line now and, and do all of this kind of stuff that I don't know, the marketplace seems to not be showing signals in that regard. Last week I talked about if I was a major hedge fund, I would be going and buying put options now because the stock price just got so ridiculously high on the valuation here. And what new buyers are gonna come into the marketplace? I used the example of my t-shirt. You could buy this for $20, my shirt. You could buy it for 20 bucks or you know, you could pay 400 for it. Do you wanna pay $400 for my shirt? How many people are gonna to wanna to pay $400 for this? As the price goes up and the market cap goes up, it started, you know, it was around an $800 million company, and then it went up to $23 billion market cap. It gets harder and harder to push that needle. Instead of getting 50 shares of stock, I can get one share of stock at 400. So there's a, a big difference in that, and there's not new buyers coming into the marketplace here. They're telling people now on Reddit forums to basically hold their shares and we're still gonna stick it to the man, stick it to the hedge fund people. A lot of those people have already lost money and a lot of hedge funds have also made money. If you look at some of the occurrences in the marketplace around the shares of the stock, there were some companies that one hedge fund made $700 million. They're all, they can front run your trades from Robinhood. They sell the order flow data to these companies like Citadel, which is the one that, by the way, bailed out Melvin Capital, gave them a capital injection. They sell the order flow data so they know that that stuff's coming in and they can front run those trades. So a lot of hedge funds decided to go along with this, this populist uprising here and side with them and drive out these short positions that were in the stock, and that's what happened. So the amount of shares sold short on GameStop, they were at like 138 at one point, went down to 100%, then 80 something percent. And I think the last one I saw was around 53% of the float is sold short. So it really came down from where it was. A lot of those people closed out those positions. And then going back to the put options, because the stock price got so high, a lot of these big investment companies, if you look at last Friday's close on January or February 5th, there was like 60,000 stock options trading for in the money 
put put options on GameStop stock because so many people were betting that the price was going to fall on that. I mean, if you just look at some of the volumes on this stuff, it's pretty crazy. So a lot of people made a lot of money buying those put options now, betting that the stock would go down in price. And then you have all these people on Reddit and also a lot of big media personalities saying, hold the line, hold the door. And the problem with that, you even have the Wolf of Wall Street, that that guy from the, the actual guy, not the movie, right? He came out and he made a whole video as if he was in the Wolf of Wall Street movie with Leonardo DiCaprio and was talking to the crowd there and was telling them, oh, they're going to get the hedge funds, they're going to hand it to them, we're going to hold our positions. When you have that guy that's literally a scam artist giving you that kind of advice, maybe you got to take it with a grain of salt, right? So we're still going to see where the stock goes from here, but the momentum has been disrupted, one, by the the problems with the trading platforms like Robinhood, Interactive Brokers, and Webull all canceled or prevented trans- transactions from happening in particular stocks. And the reason they studied for this was the DTCC, which is the clearinghouse that they all go to, they raised the margin requirements tenfold to be able to trade shares of these particular companies because there was such high volume. And that in and of itself, I mean, if you're gonna do an investigation about this, I mean, people are suing Robinhood right now because they weren't allowed to trade, although that is in their their fine print when you sign up under their agreement. But the real investigation should be into, you know, this DTCC. How are they able to just raise the margin requirements when there's the most activity in these stocks and people really are actively trading them and then you're just gonna shut it down completely? It's pretty crazy there. So you had all these people saying, hold the line, right? The problem is you're not supposed to get emotional about stock. Hey Fox, where the hell are you? I am losing millions. Now you got me into this airline, you sure as hell better get me out of the only job you're ever gonna have on this street is sweeping it. You hear me, Fox? You once told me don't get emotional about stock, Gordon. Don't. The bid is 16 and a half and going down. As your broker, I advise you to take it. That's not investing. That's just, you know, you getting emotional thinking you can make a political statement or a, you know, a stab at people or a system that you don't like through stocks and that's not exactly what they do here, right? So the problem here is now all these people that purchase shares at $400 and $300 a share are still holding and it recently traded at $66 a share. Those people that said, oh, I'm just using speculative money, it doesn't matter if I lose it all, I think they're going to care when they actually see that loss in their system and they're not going to want to take that loss, probably hold it till the end and as it continues to go down. The problem is there's not any new buyers. Everybody already knows about this. It was on mainstream news. It was all over the place. Even, you know, old people, young people, everybody in the middle, everybody knew about this. So where would the new buyers come in to purchase these shares? And that's the problem. And especially with the the price of the shares being so expensive. Now that the shorts have closed the position, this was a trade, a trade you do on a specific criteria. Once that criteria is met, and we had the short squeeze and the gamma squeeze, then you sell out of the position. That's how you operate on a trade. This was not an investment that you go into GameStop and you think it's such a great company and is doing so well because they're doing terrible. Now, a lot of people do say that you can you can stay with GameStop for the long run because they give a bunch of reasons there, how they got additional capital, they have $300 million, they have all these store locations that they can utilize, they sell Besides games are going digitally, they can sell headsets and controllers and stuff like that. Okay, so there could be a turnaround here. But the problem is the turnaround doesn't make a share price go from $4 to $66 a share. And the market cap right now, which is about five or six billion dollars a share or for the whole company, I mean, maybe if it was, you know, 16, 17, 18, like 20 a share and it was a market cap of a billion or less, maybe that would be realistic. You realize that these turnarounds take some time and they haven't shown that they can even present a plan for a turnaround, let alone show positive quarters here. So for people to speculate on that, which is something that could take you know two years to have a turnaround in this company, and when you've had all of this happen in a two week period where the stock price has just gone crazy, I think it's pretty disingenuous to just be telling other people to hold shares of the stock when I just, you know, I want to see what is people's reasoning for thinking that it's going to jump up in price once again when it's clearly a lot higher than the fundamentals would suggest.
So that was a lot of the information on this. We have to see how these lawsuits and also if the government's going to be investigating into this. And this got so big that we now have, I think there's three or four major motion pictures that might come out of this. I think one was based on the founder of the Wall Street Bets Forum. He is going to have a, a kind of a movie about his story and how he created that. I think he sold that for like uh, low six figures. He sold the rights to produce that. Then the guy that made the movie 21 and The Social Network, which were both very good movies, he was supposedly making, potentially making a movie around this whole GameStop short squeeze, which would be pretty cool to see. Two other companies, I think, also were trying to do movie rights on this, and they're interviewing different people in the situation. And if you look at some of the, I mean, there was a ton of people that made money on this, right? And you saw the good and the bad with it. And now you're seeing a lot of individual investors getting hurt because they're losing money here and they don't know what to do. They don't even know why they purchased the shares. And I think that's why it's kind of, it, you know, it's, it's troublesome to see people telling people to hold when they, they, people don't really understand why they would be holding and what the outlook is. I think one guy made uh, like $230,000 when he sold out at the top there. I mean, you have people like that. You have the original guy, uh, Kevin Gill from... Reddit, he, he made uh, posts in Reddit way back last year saying this stuff and he was up millions of dollars. He took some of its profits out and then he was leaving the rest and saying he was holding that. But if you look at the big wigs, the people that really know what they're doing, they sold out of their positions or at least sell what you put into it so you're just playing with the house's money, so to speak. And then you can keep you know the rest in there with a hopefully something happening, some kind of turnaround here. So that's why in the earlier videos we were saying that you should get like put options and probably watch the stock go down and that's kind of what happened and it's just unfortunate that it did with this whole uh, like this this mess of of trading being halted on particular stocks by particular companies and man this was just this is going to be a great movie to watch when it comes out so we'll keep watching this one but that was the the big news updates for now this is Andrew with Spark Finance thanks for watching